Hi everybody, Mr. Sioka here. In this video, we're going to look at the monetary policy solution to a contractionary or recessionary gap. So, in this video, because a lot of graphs to cover, I started off by drawing the graph this time, showing the fact that we were operating below full employment. Right there, there's our Y1, below full employment. And as a result, we are in a recession, which means we have a pretty high unemployment rate, and we want to try and do something to get that unemployment rate down. So this time we're going to look at what can the Federal Reserve do to solve the problem by altering the supply of money. So what the Fed wants to do here in this situation is shift the supply of money to the right. So as a result, here we have a new money supply curve, and I've shifted it to the right. And the reason for doing this is the hope is that by shifting the money supply to the right, we're going to bring down nominal interest rates. And we remember from previous videos that if we lower nominal interest rates, this creates an incentive for households to consume. This tends to lower the borrowing cost for businesses, so investment spending rises. And it also tends to weaken the dollar, so as a result, net exports tend to rise. All three of these are components of aggregate demand. And when aggregate demand increases, it shifts to the right. So we've got aggregate demand shifting to the right because of increases in components of aggregate demand like consumption, investment, and net exports. Because all three of these tend to rise when interest rates fall. And the objective of the Federal Reserve by increasing the money supply is to get interest rates to fall. So this tends to return us to full employment at a higher price level. So we return to full employment at the new equilibrium at a higher price level. Now, in order to increase the money supply, there's three things the Fed can do in its toolbox to increase money supply. The first thing it can do is it can buy government bonds. When the Fed buys government bonds, it prints new money, enters the bond market, and starts buying for the bonds and pays for them in new cash. This increases the supply of money. The next thing the Fed can do is lower the discount rate. The discount rate is the rate in which the Fed charges other banks to borrow from the Fed. So if we lower the discount rate, we make it cheaper for banks to borrow money from the Federal Reserve. And the third thing it can do is lower the reserve requirement. When the Federal Reserve lowers banks' required reserves, it makes excess reserves for those banks to lend out, thus increasing the amount of loans that can be made and increasing the money supply. That's all for now. Thanks for listening.